Hey guys, before I start the video, um, I've just got a little, uh, sorry, let me just click the button to see if it makes me look any better, I'm a bit low light. Uh, basically, if anyone's like myself, has got tons of button down shirts in their wardrobe that they never wear. I have now dedicated a few of my button down shirts as work shirts because when you take your that I'll never wear. When I take my hoodie off at work, and then I put and then obviously my shirts on, I look somewhat presentable. Like old school, old school. Back when bricklayers used to wear a fucking shirt, a tie, jump, fucking jumper or whatever, with tie hanging out. Uh, just just put it on YouTube. Nineteen eighty, nineteen sixties or nineteen seventies bricklayers, and just look what they used to wear. There's an old um, hunt, hunt, hunting to archives or something like that does a video on it. Just a little thought. I've been doing it because I ran out of t-shirts. I didn't wash them all. And I had tons of dress shirts I never wear. I never go out anymore hardly. Going out this weekend, but it's by the by. But I'll tell you what, do it. Put it on your hoodies at work and you'll feel more sophisticated when you're Brit Lane. And uh, yeah, check out my tree because I'm going to all the mums on Facebook do this, don't they? Take a picture of the Christmas tree. So, I'm looking at this while I'm doing my voiceover. Check it out. It looks a lot better on this camera than in real life, by the way. And that's our lad's kitchen. Oh, it's a uh, shopping. Yeah, it's full of toys, this house. Check it. Is but you're going to complain at the angle. Any footage is better than no footage. I'm going to try to do this. I don't know how, I've seen quite a few bit ways doing. Take a fur and uh, like that. Yeah, that's it. 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 Yeah, that's Tip of, tap it, tip of the day. You have to put this bit out, you're about half focus. Tap the screen, don't we? Send you back in focus. There you go. So finish with a full one. It's tip top. Got the soap. Got the soap coming out of them. Push and put. Look at the fucking suds. The suds coming out of them soapers. Why am I hot? Am I getting the gobble? 
Yeah. I'm getting a today then. Stop making out, have it. You haven't got anything so far. Video then. I'll be alright, I can get this course. Might need some milk wine for that side though. Well then I'll stop recording. Uh. It's like a fish, it's a flat fish. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? I'd have to do as much edited. Look at sticky fish now. Look here, you've only got two buckets. Four buckets worth. And you're sweating! No, that's one as well. Okay. Sweating. says you can't take the, uh, the conny bricks up in a full day, 21, in the back. That build your movement right in. You look proper short. <laughs> what? You look proper short. Right. On this video. <laughs> Your legs look like half the size. <laughs> it's because your, your vest goes a bit below your jacket so it looks like you makes your legs look shorter. Good. <laughs> every brick every good brick here now is short. Time is that way. Never mind. Yeah, same time, like Making such noise. It's cold today. 
Oh, it's getting home. Oh. Okay. Put that over. This one left and then right to keep up. Could be only person that job doing pick and dip. The last job I showed a couple of my mates and they were fucking doing it straight away. Like a big fish in a small pond. What? He's talking to rubbish. Hurry, Bob. I see you don't listen to my voiceovers then, Mel. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. <laughs> I just zone you out when you're babbling away. Too much fucking soap in these. Less soap in these fucking sofas. Listen, I've got the fucking glazer soap on that. Oh, but there is no soap. It's going dramatic. <laughs> Little lick of the lips. <laughs> That's so cool, like glazed fucking brick. Glazed donuts. Hey guys, Harry here. Back with another Brit Lane vlog. This is the voiceover part of the video, so... I'm having a couple of pints of Stella, aka uh, Wife Beater, for those who live in the UK. Um, so yeah, I'm not having Shandy actually for a change. I've I've got I've had a I did, I've run out of lemonade. I didn't want to put Fanta lemon with it because I think that tastes <laughs> tastes rotten. So I've got I'm just have, I'm on my third can and I've done I've had tried to make this voiceover already once, but I started rambling a little bit too much. Uh, walking up my Christmas tree. I hope you enjoyed this that little uh, intro. I'm trying to change up the videos a little bit more, make them a bit more personable. You know, got you know 12. Hold on a minute, my washer's going off again. Un I thought it was finished spinning, but obviously it's making more noise. Um, I'm trying to change up the way I do the videos. You a bit of you know raw footage ASMR style. <laughs> Obviously got the voiceovers, which is my signature, uh, what Move Channel's known for, because that's basically all my content's been up until this point. And then, obviously, you know, uh, the time lapses and stuff. I've left my um, tripod at home, I think, today. On a few occasions, I left it at home, so I, did, I was going to make a time lapse today, but I get the missus to just sit and film me for 20 minutes you know, that you'll see in my head cam sometimes she sat down and stuff and um, at the end of the day, I won't have her at work with me if it wasn't speeding me up and if she wasn't as good as any other odd carrier I've had. You know, if she wasn't any good, I'd get another odd carrier. But, um, like it or not, you know, she's better than a lot of, a lot of the odd carriers, basically all the odd carriers I've had. She's faster than the old man, uh, less, she works better and more efficient than most odd carriers I've got because, you know, in between getting everything she needs to get me, she just sits down, sits down, sits on her phone, chats to me, and that's literally all the job is as a hog carrier. They're like, uh, you see a good dog carrier, they stood around half the time having a chat with you because a good dog carrier just gets the work done they need to do, loads out in front if there's anything to load out, gets all your bricks where you need them, and that's it. Um, on these bricks, as you can see how wet they are and how soapy they are, pointings out the window, you basically got to do it at the end of the day, especially if you've got wet bricks. We built this in wet bricks, we had wet ready mix, pointings out the window there. You know, people say, get a spread in, get a spread in, yeah, you can spread fine, but when I'm on a middle pillar, when the gear is wet, when the bricks are wet, if someone spreads for you wrong, it can slow you down, it can balls up your work. Like, for instance, Today the gobble was like shit. And we're on that small of a run. It got to too awkward. Uh, it got to an awkward height for it to spread too quickly. So there's no point in it spreading. And because I had to, I have to lay 
these concrete bricks a certain way pick and dip really really precise I know guys will say pick and dip's rough but it's not it's a really good way to get full bed joints every time Add stability to your wall you're sliding your brick as opposed to pressing it which eliminates a lot of that downward force on it uh, <clears throat> and it is better for me in some way in some situations to spread I, I don't get apprentices or mel spreading on when we're on thermite work i spread one lay one um when we're on heavy walls i get i'll have mel spreading or if i'm on long runs of brickwork i'll have mel spreading but on intricate bits like pillars and piers where i can't afford to smudge the brickwork at all i can't have a porch to have mel dropping gobble down the wall apprentices dropping gobble down the wall etc i eliminate, eliminate those factors um i know a lot of bricklayers have this tendency if because a lot, the, a lot of these comments come from guys who work in gangs when you're looking after two brick layers your labor is probably constantly on the go just getting muck getting gobbo loading out enough gear for you all stacking bricks up and stuff but when you're in a one-on-one -on -one, the labor has very uh, has an easy day has an easy time another one-on-one -on -one on here nice lads um the labor of that brick layer he sits around some of the day, sits on his phone, chats away. He spreads, and then even in between spreading and stuff, he's sat down. So I think there's a thing that a lot of bricklayers, uh, because of the the job of the bricklayer compared to the labourer, the bricklayer always has to be laying bricks, and the labourer has downtime in between getting gobbo, spreading, stacking bricks, passing the bricklayer bricks, stuff like that. Mel passes me bricks when it gets high. Uh, for instance, she did all the perps on this when it was getting high and then passed me some bricks. She also did filming, so if she wasn't here, you guys couldn't see this footage because I didn't have anywhere to put my camera. I left my SD card out on my action cam as well, so... Um, I know, guys, you'll get comments and all sorts, oh, they're not doing this, not doing that. End of the day, um, if Mel wasn't working with me, I'd have no weight, I'd, no, I'd have no hog carrier. I probably couldn't get an hog carrier very quick, and they'd be probably worse than Mel they'd be probably a lot worse than Mel and and the money that Mel's earning goes in the same household I live in so benefits me doubly uh, whereas if I was paying hog carrier I'm just paying a hog carrier money off this plot taking money out of my uh, out of what I'm earning and sending it away you know giving it to you know someone someone who I don't know uh, whereas when I'm paying Mel you know it's everything's benefiting our lifestyle, our household, etc. So, I know it is one of them things you people will have, you know, will have, will leave the nasty comments and stuff. But YouTube tends to get rid of them um, all the time, and a lot of guys, you know, it comes down to, you know, people being jealous as well. You know, they're stuck with a fucking crappy old carrier who always fucking mounds the tits off uh, about money, etc., whatever, and or, or it comes from guys who work in shitty gangs, don't earn fuck all. A moan that they're losing time at work and this this and that and sit on youtube you know leaving fucking comments uh so yeah that is all it is that's all it is but yeah i tell you what mel has been a godsend uh we've earned some right money these last two weeks um given the hours we've done given the situation given everything um um it's going to be a productive uh, it's going to be a productive winter. It's going to be probably my best winter. I, I can guarantee you right now, it's going to be my best winter I've had. And um, with the upcoming, with the old man helping us upcoming on these plots, there's some hell, there's some really good earnings. Even with the bricks, it can only get better as um, as winter departs us after the, after the spike. Uh, but, you know, I could probably see myself staying on after... Um, Right, after last week where I'd made them fucking balls up so I had to fix them this this week, after seeing what I could earn one on one, because this has been my first, this has been my first week one on one on like on my on my own work on my on my on my, my on a fresh plot that's my own. Obviously, you saw for the first couple for the first six weeks or so, I was, you know, finishing off other people's lifts, um, just on measure, but. When I've now finally been on proper price, like properly priced plots on my own, this was my, basically been my first week one on one where I've really seen um, what we can earn for sort of the effort I'm putting in on it in a day. It's really good. It's really good. Um, uh, you know, I'm not someone who attacks it every day. You've seen in the videos, 
try to vlog, you know, my day to day uh, operation. And, you know, I'm a relaxed worker. I don't get here early. I'm after eight, obviously. I don't leave. I don't leave late a lot of the time. I leave a lot, a lot earlier than a lot of gangs. Uh, and when I do start getting in the groove, getting my health, my, you know, my nutrition right, my <coughs> my sleep right, you know, and really picking up, uh, getting a bit more energy, picking up the speed with, uh, and the hours with working, you know, you can earn some serious money. I've earned some, some really good money when I've picked up my hours and my tempo. Uh, and I can see just with the hours as I'm working on at the moment that, you know, there's potential there to earn some really good money if I if I actually get, you know, if I actually uh, push the boat out and push the envelope a bit. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the hours you want to work. I'm on a I'm in a little bit of a wind down uh, to Christmas because we've got after this week we've got about two and a half weeks worth of murder lifts. Um, I don't know if we'll start another plot. Hopefully not because I think the joiners. As soon as my murder lift's finished and the scaffold's lifted, um, you know, hopefully uh, that'll all happen within a week because I've left about a week's money on each murder lift. Um, and it's so much easier as a as a one and one you know, literally your profit margin, your sort of money-making margin goes up massively only having to make one wage. Um, even with the old man loading out, the wage, he, the wage I have to I pay him, in in the hours he loads out is it, it's not even worth sort of taking into consideration you know it, it makes if someone loads two or three packs of bricks out for you you know it makes you some rare money uh especially the uh, the arrangement me and my dad have you know he only works i just pay him per, per the hour and you know if he works four hours he gets four hours worth of money so uh that's how he wants to do it that's how he requests to do it i want to pay him more he won't take it uh but you know I'm lucky. I'm lucky. My dad's sort of does a bit of charity work for me now and again to help me out. So, um, so yeah. So there's there's definitely a benefit to small gangs. That's sort of what the topic's going to be about today in today's video, and that's sort of how I address the workload issue in winter, and um, how you can benefit. How you can benefit. You've seen obviously. Um, if you watch the, I know Charlie Collison used to be a one and one. Uh, a couple of years ago before he started getting big on the YouTube. I know he has his own ways of uh, making money uh, with, you know, off his improvers or his odd carriers or whatever he, whatever arrangement he has with his private work, etc. You can make you can make some good money off improvers and apprentices and stuff. You know, it can make you money. Also comes along with a lot of stress. And I even saw having two odd carriers or, you know, I mean, you know, improver or prover and odd carrier, whatever, you know, it has, it, 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 uh, you know, presents more stress than I was willing to cope with. So, you know, uh, if, you know, a particular person can make money out of, of a couple of lads, you know, uh, whether you know, well teaching them and etc. or power to them, because I ain't got the fucking mental capacity to do all that shit. Uh, I'd get stressed out of my mind. I'd be, I'd be drinking more than fucking four cans of fucking beer a week i'd be drinking 40 to cope with that shit so you know so i'll be happy staying one-on-one -on -one for the time being until um until the missus you know uh, as long as she wants to work well we're just one-on-one -on -one. and then we might end up getting another lad in summer i don't know i don't know i, I can i just just seeing the disparity it's so much easier being one-on-one -on -one. uh especially when you've got an efficient one-on-one -on -one gang as well uh and uh I'll be, I'll be introducing some more efficiency tips, some more um, plot uh, sort of uh, plot building tactics for guys on the housing. Obviously, we're on housing now. Obviously, when I started the channel, there's a lot of boundary walls and stuff. So now this will give, hopefully, um, any any guys who are in gangs and stuff a little bit more tips. I know a lot of mine only tailor to one-on-ones, but... You know, even as a as an efficient as an efficient two gang, or uh, two and one like um, a couple of fast guys like Kurt Malpass and his mate Zach, you know that that can, even stuff like this uh, that stuff some of my tips can benefit even guys and gangs like that. So anyway, guys, thank you uh, very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. Uh, leave us a like. Have a good weekend, and subscribe if you enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one.
They make a good job of wet brick work. Wet sofas. Look at that. There we go. Backs up. All inside clean. Front brick work, front block work. Like a two and a half days next week. And back up there. Uh, next door. Thanks for watching.